Live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, this is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of How to Day Trade in Real Life, part numero uno. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world, how are each and every one of you doing out there on internet land? If you are here live, type in a one if you can hear me and see me okay. I hope that's the case. My brother, Chris Albanese in the building. What's up, Chris? Hope you're doing fantastic. For those who are watching recorded, either on the website, on YouTube, on Twitter, or any of our other social media, thank you so much for being here. You are awesome, and I mean it. This is an exciting class. Give me about six seconds to pull this up really quick. I just want to make sure this is working. Awesome, fantastic, loving it. Really quick, I want to talk about this. Why in the world is this program free? And I want to rest assured, for anyone who is there watching this, this is entirely free. There's no sales pitch. You can stick around for the entire thing, right? I'm not going to ask you for your money at all. The reason that this is free, the mission of real life trading is to enrich lives. That's the mission of real life trading. And unlike the majority of companies, most companies will tell you how exciting the stock market is, how much money you can make from the stock market, how it can change your financial life, how you can break through all the barriers and travel to all the places and buy all the cars and do all the things that you want to do from just the stock market. Now granted, all that information is entirely true. However, <laughs> however, it's difficult. It's not as easy as that. So. As they sell you the dream and they say, buy now, sign up immediately, only 10 seats left. If you don't buy at this exact moment in time, it's gone forever. People buy, they want that product, they want that dream, and so they purchase. I know I could do that. It's actually really simple. I'm a pretty good salesman overall. But I want to give this information to you because someone out there in the world right now, this information is going to change your life forever. You're going to learn how to day trade and you're going to be able to escape the chains of financial oppression, but it's just going to take time. It's going to take energy. It's going to take devotion. It's going to take practice. It's going to take work. It's going to take years, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. It's going to take a while. Years is a fact. I mean, if you went to med school, who here would feel comfortable getting surgery from a doctor that only went to school for three months? No, no one would, right? You've got to dedicate time to the craft, to the practice. You've got to focus. You've got to be there. You've really, really got to hone in on that skill. Years and years of mastery, and you really can accomplish this. So 120 more seconds, and we're going to get right into the information. Number one, who am I? My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom. I am currently 29 years old, and I have been professionally trading the markets and professionally involved in the markets. Uh, full time, meaning this is all I've done for about four and a half years, give or take. Now, I've been trading overall for almost 10 years, meaning I started at the age of 20. When I was seven, the movie Forrest Gump changed my life forever, right? At the very, very end, when Lieutenant Dan invested in the fruit company, and I asked my dad what was the fruit company, and he told me about Apple, and he told me about investing, and he told me about the stock market. I was just so jazzed up. I knew ever since the age of seven that I wanted to be involved in the stock market somehow. As I got older, I also realized that I wanted to be a teacher. Unfortunately, in my personal opinion, teachers just do not get paid enough money. And I'm not going to go down that road right now. I think the education system in the United States and really in all of North America is just totally old school. It needs to be entirely revamped. That's a whole other mission for a whole other life for me. I'm going to make that happen at some point in the future. But teachers, if a, if a history teacher made $120,000 a year and can travel and do what they want, when they want to do, when they want to do it, be entirely free and just teach and really dive into history with people who are passionate about it, I'd probably be a history teacher right now. But I found the passion of teaching. I found the stock market. I figured out a way to blend those two together. So that's why we're here. So we're going to talk about day trading. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. We all know what day trading is. We all know the perks. We all know the benefits. I don't have to tell you how much money you can make or all that good stuff. I don't have to fill you in on that. All right, Cecilia, that's not important. You already know that day trading can be an incredible, incredible thing. I'm just going to teach you what the next four classes look like. This is class one, Mr. Scott Beck. 
Hello, Miss Francois Cease. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for being here. Guru from India. Thank you for being here. Steve says, you rock. What's up, Mr. Steve? How's it going? So this is an overview of the next four classes. The overview of the next four classes. So you're here at class one. We're going to talk about today which stocks to focus on, how to find them, what is a gap, what do the gaps mean, and what type of gaps are there. That We're going to be talking about that in this particular class. Then class two is going to be, for those who are here live, same time tomorrow. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central. Uh, same exact link that you have now will work perfectly. And then we're going to talk about uh, how, the, how to play the four types of gaps, how to measure rate. And then class three, we're going to talk about buying power, margin, slippage, day trading through a hedge fund, virtual trading. And then class four, I'm going to give you some real life expectations, creating a trading plan, trader psychology, all that good stuff. I truly believe I can teach anyone in the world how to day trade if they know something about the stock market in four classes, approximately five hours total. If you're ready to take the challenge with me, type in a two. Justin says real life expectations. Yeah, you got it? I like it. All right, here we go. Let's start. I'm going to minimize this screen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. What we're going to do is I'm going to pull up. I only have two slides. That was all of my slides, by the way, for the whole presentation. <laughs> that was it. So the rest is just me and this screen. So what we're going to be talking about is day trading and what it looks like and how to start. The number one most important thing in day trading, in my personal opinion, is narrowing down when you're first starting out, narrowing down the opportunities. Okay. And we have to figure out the why and how. So first of all, how do we narrow down the opportunities and why do we narrow down those opportunities? Because when you're day trading, how do you choose a stock? There are literally tens of thousands of stocks available in the US stock market to trade. Now, if you're an international student who are here, type in a three, by the way, if you're an international student. I wonder how many people are just not here in the US. Um, if you're a three, thank you, Sally. Oh man, Jill here, Wilson here, Justin's here, Cecilia, oh, fantastic. So if you are an international student, you might trade the US market through um, a, contact, a contract for difference or a CFD. Maybe you do trade the US option or stock market, but you can also use the same information to trade your markets. All right, so if you are in, in uh, Europe, or if you're in Asia, if you're in India, or if you're in Australia, if you're in Singapore, or uh, Africa, or in, I already said India, if you're in that general scope of the world, so are the US, you can use this information that still apply it to your market as well. So this is beneficial, okay? All the information I'm talking about is gonna be relevant to where you're at as, as well, because the fact is, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities out there. There are more opportunities every day than you can take advantage of in a lifetime. So what we've got to keep in mind, what we've got to focus on when we're trading is narrowing down those selections. Otherwise, your brain's going to explode, you're going to get a migraine, and you're not going to know what to focus on. And even if you did focus on it, it would just be too overwhelming, too much information. We've got to narrow it down. So the biggest question comes, how do we do that narrowing? How do we do that process? And then I'm going to talk about the why. The how part, my good friends, and I'm just going to be as honest as I possibly can, the how part is different from every single course that you've gone to. By the way, thank you so much for the participation so far. You're doing phenomenal. If you're watching this as a recording on YouTube, feel free to put in the comment section below. You can still answer my questions. But type in uh, 1.73 <laughs> in the chat pane if you've taken other day trading courses from other companies. I'm not going to be mad. Guys, education is boundless. I want you to take as much information as you possibly can. I just happen to be the best, right? No worries. So 1.73, there's a lot of them, so you've taken a lot of courses. The reason I'm bringing it up is because the how will differ from person to person, company to company, market to market, country to country. Okay, it's gonna be different. Everyone has their own strategies. Just like there's no rhyme or reason for me to tell you how to decorate your house, how to dress, how to have a successful relationship, right? Everyone has certain aspects, certain ways they're gonna do something. And there's no way that I can say this right here is the only true way. I would never say that. There are plenty of ways to day trade. I'm gonna be talking about a how that is very commonly used 
for the majority of profitable day traders, or at least the traders that I've met personally. Are there other ways? Sure. But one thing I want you to take away, ladies and gentlemen, from this course is the market rewards the specialist. What that means is, if you're a doctor, what type of doctor are you? You probably have a specialty, right? If you're a contractor, what type of contractor are you? Okay, if you're a chiropractor, are you also a painter, roofer, and scalpel? All right, if you uh, teach, do you also drive race cars? I mean, maybe you do, but the market rewards the specialist, right? So does life. Life rewards the specialist. So if you wanna make a lot of money, if you wanna do anything, you gotta get really, really, really good at a few small things. You've ever heard of the jack of all trades, master of none? Everyone's already heard that. I have a copious amounts of interests. One could call me the Jeremy of all trades. But when it comes to the stock market, there is a specific focus that we can have together, and I'm going to keep teach that right now. So the how is focusing on something called a gap. A gap is simply an overnight change in price. Overnight, uh, I'll do a delta symbol for change. Overnight change in price. That's what a gap is. Now, we're looking at a random stock right now, uh, Kohl's, ticker symbol KSS. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point, let me turn off all this, clear up the chart for a second, and I'm gonna point to a few gaps. So this particular chart, this is a daily chart right now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point to some gaps with a red arrow, okay? Here's a gap there, there's a gap there, this should be a song. There's a gap there, gap action! Right there, there's a gap, gap action! Gap action! So there's a few gaps on the screen. So this is a daily chart, all these gaps with the red arrows, these are signifying when the stock had a different price from the open to the close of the previous day, okay? So for example, let's say today is Tuesday. Stock XYZ on Monday closed at 10 dollars, 10 US dollars, or 10 currencies, okay? It doesn't really matter, 10 currencies, whatever the currency is, because if there's an international market, you can trade this the same way. Let's say Tuesday morning, that stock opens at $12. Ladies and gentlemen, true or false did that gap? I know that's a verbal question, but if the stock closed at 10 on a Monday, Tuesday it opens at 12, did it gap, true or false? The answer is, Walt's answering, oh, Bob Smith, here's Sam Curtis, Sylvan, Dan, Rudy, excellent, everyone's saying yes or true. Absolutely, so I think, a gap is actually a pretty common occurrence on most stocks. What we're gonna be talking about tonight, we're gonna to really focus on why they occur and why it's important to trade them and why they happen and how you can benefit from it. So there's a lot of whys and hows in tonight's course, okay? So all these red arrows, they point to the gap and there's a lot more gaps on the screen that I'm pointing to, but these are gonna be the most, these are the most obvious, all right? So that's all a gap is. A gap is simply a change from price to price, from close to the open of the next day. When I'm analyzing a gap, the prior day's candle is gonna be the most important, okay? The prior day. So we're gonna talk about the prior day, so what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna Quentin Tarantino you. I'm gonna say, hey, this is what we're about to talk about, and I'm gonna go right back to where I was just talking about. Okay, so the prior day candle is the most important thing. When we're narrowing down a day trading list, we're going to say, all right, stocks, there's 10,000 of you. Now, all I want is the stocks that are gapping. That's all I'm gonna look for. If you look for stocks that are gapping, you're gonna immediately take that 10,000 list and you're gonna whittle it down to about, eh, let's say 400. <laughs> Whoa, 400, that's still, that is a lot of stocks, I agree. That's still a lot. So what we do now is now that we've classified a gap, right? Now that the stock is gapping, just clean and simple. Now we're gonna talk about a few other instruments, a few other things over the next four sessions to show and determine how you can whittle this 400 down to a list of about four to five. That's what you're gonna focus on all day that's what you're gonna trade, and now you have a much, much smaller list, and it's actually a process that can be completed, ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? In about 10 minutes. 
Sharon says, how do you find the gaps? Oh, Sharon, you stick with me for about 30 minutes and I got you. Santosh says, when you when do you look for the list? Is it the beginning of the day when the trading starts? Woo! You guys are asking such great questions. I love it. Stay with me. All right, Santosh and Sharon, it's coming. If you're on the edge of your seats, if you ask that question, that means I'm doing my job right. I'm happy. All right. So the prior day candle. So we talked about gaps. Now let's talk about the prior day candle. Why is the prior day's candle important? What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this candle. I'm going to show it to you in black right there. Why is this candle important, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's talk about it. When I'm looking at a gap, the candle that matters the most is the candle that happened yesterday. Now, let me pause for about 17 seconds. If you are not super familiar with candlesticks, this is the time to learn. Go to reallifetrading.com and I have an ebook that's entirely for free that will fill you in all about candles. Reallifetrading.com, click on classes, come down here to candlesticks, boom, that's gonna be entirely for free. You need to learn candles to day trade. Let me rephrase that. You need to learn candles to day trade. Let me say that in a different way. If you want to day trade, you should really learn candles. I'll say it a fourth time, but differently. If you have an inkling to trade profitably in the day trading realm, you probably should really learn candles. It's very, very important. Wilson says, I have my copy in front of me now. My man, I like that. All right, so candlestick ebook is very, very important. Also, if you are watching this from YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can type in um, candlestick analysis, real life trading, and you'll get all kinds of uh, cool videos. Let me see, let me just type that in and see what happens. Candlestick analysis, real life trading. I'm just interested to see what comes up. Ah, perfect. Boom, candlestick analysis in real life, the top, the top six candlestick patterns, how to effectively trade the hour part, what we compare candles, one white soldier, it's all there. All right, it's all there. So you need to learn candles. If you are brand, 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 brand new to this stuff, go to reallifetrain.com, click on classes, go to beginners, right? Go to candlesticks. It's okay that you're, that you're new. This, all this stuff is free. I teach everything for free. Everything, everything, everything. All right. It's all free. Go for it. Knock yourself out. It's a buffet of brain food. All I'm getting at is you got to learn candles to day trade. All right. So pointing back to this candle with a black arrow, two of them, in fact, let's talk about what that candle means. I use black and white candles. You can easily use red or green or blue or yellow, whatever colors you want, as long as you know which candles are bullish and which candles are bullish, AKA as long as you know what the candle color is when the stock is going up and what the candle color is when the stock is going down. You need that. I was about to say there's very little facts in the stock market. There's very little absolute guarantees, but here is one. One of those guarantees is if you see a strong white bullish candle, or again, it doesn't matter the color, but if you see a really strong bullish candle, someone in the world bought that day, actually bought stock, like they own it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back in time a little bit on this particular stock. And this is just a random stock. We're gonna look at all kinds later. All right, so we're gonna come back to this particular stock. And I went back in time, so let's pretend that this is today looking at this candle, we can guarantee that someone on this day, my friends, bought the stock. Absolute facts. Now again, there's not many facts in the market, but that is one of them. If you see a bullish candle, you know for sure someone bought that day, guaranteed. Now when someone buys the stock, what do they usually think? Well, I'm gonna make so much money. They start dreaming of going to Tahiti and taking that two week trip to Aruba and buying the Rolex and paying off their credit card, right? They just start imagining all the amazing things they're gonna do with that money. They're really pumped, they're really excited, right? That's what they do. So what happens? How do they feel the next day? How do they feel? What's their feeling? Now, if you say, I don't really know, Jeremy, I have no idea. Put yourself in their shoes. Let's rephrase the question. Marta, Jesse, Chris, Tim, 
Greg, Florence, Bonnie, Joshua, Sharon, everyone who's here, how would you feel if you bought that day and the very, very next day, whoa-joom, huge gap, gap action, stock gaps down overnight and you're down tons of money. Oh, the words are coming in now. You're bummed, you're panicked, you're upset, you're sad, you're crying. All of those dreams the day before are now broken, said Richard. You feel like a loser, uh, says another Richard. Sam says, so terrible. Chris says, I'm pissed. Uh, T says, don't tell the why. So there's a lot of people that are losing money. Now, here's what's important. Here's the biggest takeaway from really these entire classes. You guys are ready for this? Day trading is about knowing and understanding. Ready? Ready? Day trading is about knowing and understanding how people feel. And you can do that by looking at a stock chart. Because you could have known, Sharon, that this gap was going to happen before it occurred. And I'm going to show you tonight, before it occurred, you will know that, that gap's going to be there. And you can use the psychology of the markets to know how people are going to feel. And if everyone is sad, upset, panicked, and scared, what are they going to do more than likely if they are in that stock? Exactly. Lauren and Santi and Guru and Jesse and Johnny, everyone's saying they are going to sell. Exactly. So if they are going to sell, when we're day trading, you want to sell with them. You want to sell with them. This is the most popular type of trading that exists in day trading. The, I, would, I would be hard pressed to say 90% of day traders who actually make money, like you know, cash, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. People who actually day trade day after day, they look for this type of gap. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to call it different things. There's a lot of analysts out there who will give you like a 25 point check system. I'm going to give you like a two point check system, right? It's kind of hard to go wrong with two. My theory is the stock market is actually very simple, but difficult. Would you guys agree? It's very simple, but difficult. Like walking a thousand miles. Walking in of itself for the majority of people in the world is actually pretty simple. Right? Just stand on your feet and walk. But if you have to walk a thousand miles, eh, that makes it a little more difficult. So the stock market is overall simple but difficult. This particular type of gap is something that I call a gap and go. 90% of day traders who make a lot of money are always focused on the short side. Can anyone guess why they're always looking for the bearish play? They're always looking for the short trade. Most day traders I know look for the short, the bearish. It's fast. Exactly. It moves quickly. When people sell, when they panic, things move fast. And when you're day trading, you want to make money quickly. That's that simple. That makes total sense. <laughs> Okay, that makes loads of sense. Now, there are four types of gaps. I'm gonna be teaching you those four types of gaps over these four classes. This is gap number one. It's called the gap and go. This, in fact, is called a bearish. A bearish gap and go. Now, before I lose some of you, if you're thinking to yourself, oh man, geez, what if I don't have the ability to trade in a bearish market? What if I have an IRA and I can't short? What if I don't have the ability to short a market? Well, I'll talk more about that in class three. Just know that I got you. If that's your question, you're like, man, I have no idea how to do that. Let me talk about it more in class three because you could definitely buy options. Yep, there's another way you can do it as well. There's other opportunities out there for you. If you have an IRA or something that doesn't allow you to go short. But this is just what 90% of day traders do. I would argue, that's my argument. My argument is most traders look for a gap and go, a bearish gap and go. So the definition of a bearish gap and go, 
You guys ready for this? It's real, real simple. Feel free to write it down if you have a pen and paper or a pencil and paper if you're old school. Or if you're new school, maybe you have a tablet. I don't know. A bearish, so I'm going to type it bearish, bearish gap and go is when a bullish candle, a bullish candle gaps down. Wilson, so Jeremy, my challenge is I only have 12,000. My broker won't give me margin unless I have 25 and order short. Awesome. Stick around for class three, Mr. Wilson, because that's when we talk about buying power, and I'll help you out with that issue. Does that sound fair, man? So right now, just stick with me. If you don't have the money to day trade, guys, this is totally cool. That's, that's okay. I'd actually prefer you not to have the money to day trade so you can learn this stuff. But either way, for right now, don't worry about buying power. I'm going to take care of all the buying power questions in class three. I appreciate you asking. You're more than welcome to ask. I'm not saying you can't ask. I'm just letting you know it's coming. I've got you. I've got all these four classes designed for everyone in mind, and I'm pumped. <laughs> all right? So the bearish gap and go is when a bullish candle gaps down. Now, we're going to talk about how far and all that stuff in just a little bit, and we're going to talk about how bullish. But there is a term. You guys ready for the term? The term that goes with gap and go, there is a term out there called, if you've ever heard me say this, it's called trapped. The term is called trapped. Chico, that is a sentiment that you are very well aware of, my friend, right? The term trapped means when, when a stock is gapping and people can't get into the trade or they can't get out of the trade fast enough. John says, what if the stock is in an uptrend and it gaps down under a white candle into support? We'll talk about that later. Depends on how strong the gap is, what type of support it is, but this is a really great example of that, John. Here's a support right here on Kohl's. White candle, gap down into a support. All right. so this is really the exact answer to your question. It depends, unfortunately. So that brings up a great point, actually, John, because I want to take the time to say everything I'm presenting all of it works, just not all the time. <laughs> Everything in trading works, just not all the time. And the reason that is, is because of emotions. It's because you have a human element that's involved. Let me get a little relational for just a few quick seconds, okay? Type in a two if you're married or you have a long-term partner, spouse, someone that you love and dearly. It could, be, it could be kids even, or parents, or whatever. Type it two if you have a really good relationship with someone that you care a lot about, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, so a lot of twos. Is there ever a time when you say something that normally is totally fine, but every now and then, sometimes randomly, you're just now in trouble? Like, oh, I don't... You know, Richard says, yep. So you're all saying, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's, so it's not, it's not just me. I've made a lot of mistakes. My beautiful girlfriend's behind the camera, by the way, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, girlfriend. Um, her name is Ashley and she's also a real life trader. She's incredible. Made uh, 41% the other day on some trades. Awesome job. So she kills it. But same time, she says stuff to me sometimes that I'll just fly off the handle and I have no idea why and it, it's emotion. And then the same thing, I'll say something to her. Like once, one time I texted her on the phone, like early, early in the relationship, I was like, I love you. And I had a question mark instead of an exclamation mark. <laughs> you guys ever make that mistake? So anyway, all I'm getting, that's, that's a wormhole. It's a whole other story. All I'm getting at is everything works in trading, just not all the time because you have this emotional human element that's comprised throughout all of the market, right? You have this human element. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here's a mathematical fact. Remember earlier I said there's very, very few facts in the stock market? Here's another one. You guys ready for another stock market fact? Here it goes. If you lose less money than you make, you will be profitable. There you go. If you lose less money than you make. I'm here to tell you right now that my win-loss ratio over the last three years doing this stuff day in and day out is 
43.7%. That is my win-loss ratio, meaning I win 43% of the trades that I make, yet I'm profitable. Right? So with that in mind, sometimes things won't work. I get that. I understand it. But what we have to do is you have to take that approach. You have to remove variables. And if you remove those variables, then you can start focusing on what matters. So this is the bearish gap and go. We have the bearish gap and go. So let's flip the script a little bit. Flip the script. If there's a bearish gap and go, do you guys think there's something called a bullish gap and go? Yeah, sure there is. Let's go see if we can find one on the same stock. Why not? Oh, by the way, let just uh, humor me really quick. Is this a bearish gap and go? Yes or no? They're in purple. Yep, there, we just found one randomly, but there it is. Now, did it work for the day trade, right? Because that's what we're focusing on right now. Could you have made money bearish on that day, more than likely? Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Two, two for me. So let me see if I can find a. Uh oh, here's another bearish gap and go. Oh man, I'm just getting all. I'm getting them all over the place. Oh shoot. Here's another bearish gap and go. Here's another bearish gap and go. They happen often, is what I'm getting at. These things happen every day, not on one individual stock, but just in general. I'm still looking on Kohl's. Kohl's is obviously probably not the best example because uh, it's been a little bit bearish recently, but I'm going to find one. I already have a good example for one if I need one, but I thought I would just look for Kohl's. All right, here's one. It's not the best example, but it's going to work swimmingly well. All right. So if you have a bearish gap and go, there's also something called a bullish gap and go. And a bullish gap and go is when a bearish candle, bearish candle gaps up. When a bearish candle gaps up. Why in the world would that be a, bu a bullish gap and go? Well, this one I explained second because it's a little harder to understand for some newer traders, but let's work with it. Let me zoom in a little bit here uh, on this particular section. Mm, meow, meow, meow. I'm gonna zoom in with my charting software. So I'm gonna point to the candle that I'm talking about in a red arrow, just so everyone's familiar with it. There we go, there's the red arrow. Now, for my newer traders, when a bearish candle is formed, there's, here's another stock market fact. So far, I'm giving you three in this particular class, which is pretty impressive. But here's the third stock market fact. You all ready? Third mar stock market fact. When you have a bearish candle, someone in the world sold the stock short that day. Someone in the world sold the stock to short that day. Now, when I say sold the stock short, they want to make money as the market goes down. As the market goes down. If you're unfamiliar with how to short a stock, it's okay. If you need the logistics behind it, email me, jeremy at reallifetrain.com. You can do it right now, in fact, and I will somehow mysteriously email you while I'm talking to you. It's a skill that I have. <laughs> All right. If you don't know how shorting works, so black candle refers to traders who got in bearish, sold the stock short. So when the stock gaps up, those traders are trapped. Why are they trapped, ladies and gentlemen? Those traders are trapped because they are losing money. It's because they are losing money. How are they losing money? Well, when you have a bearish candle, okay, when a bearish candle is formed, a trader has to get into that trade by selling to open or shorting the stock. Do you, for those who do know, type in, when you are in a bearish position, how does one exit that trade? Deborah says, does that include traders who bought a put? Absolutely. That's a great question, Deborah. You're totally right, though. If there is a bearish candle out there in the market, you can guarantee someone in the world probably bought a put that day if the stock offers put options. 
Yep. So my question was, how does a trader who sold the stock open, how do they get out of that trade? They have to do something called buy to cover or buy to close. That's literally the function you have to put into your broker in order to exit that position. So if they have to buy to close, ladies and gentlemen, if they have to buy to close, that creates what? Well, buying pressure. <laughs> if, they, if you have a bunch of people buying to cover and buying to close because they're losing money, that's gonna create buying pressure. So if you are looking to day trade that stock, what should you do? You should look to buy. So what this does is it helps you determine a direction, John. It helps you determine a direction. That's the key to day trading. You gotta narrow all the stocks. You got to go find the stocks you wanna trade and then you have to determine the direction. Even then, our ratios are still 50-50, okay? But you gotta trust me on this one. Flipping a coin doesn't always work because there's three sides to a coin. A lot of people say there's two, but there's also the side, right? And the, the side that can roll on. <laughs> you know, there's, there's three sides to a coin. Anyway, I'm not very good at geometry. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. Direction is very, very key. You've got to determine the direction. So if you can look at a gap and you can go, oh yeah, I think this gap is bullish. Therefore, I'm gonna play this day trade bullish. For example, ladies and gentlemen, do you think you'd have had the opportunity, the knowledge, the know-how in the last 37 minutes to play this gap right here that I'm pointing to bearish on that day? Just from the last 37 minutes of us chatting together, what type of gap is that? That is a bearish gap and go. That means people were trapped, people were losing money. You now know the direction, you can look to short, you can make a lot of money that day. Let's talk about two more gaps. Then I'm gonna talk about how to find those gaps. And then I'm gonna talk about the gap size and then we're gonna be done. All right. So class two, we're gonna talk about how to trade these because that's what you're wondering. I know you are, and it's okay, right? Class two, we're gonna talk about how to actually trade these things. Right now, I need to teach you what the heck to look for. Once you've got that down, then we'll merge over to how to trade them, all right? Kristen said, finally explain to make sense. Thank you, woo, awesome. Type it in one if you just learned something in the last 37 minutes. That's my goal. Once you learn this, this is the part that most day trading companies teachers, traders, or analysts do a very, very poor job at. And it's not their fault, folks, it's really not. Here, let me shed some more light, let me shed some more honesty. I am not the best day trader. I'm not the best trader by any means. I'm not. If someone came to me and said, hey Jeremy, where would you rank on a scale of one to 100 of the best day traders in the world? I'd probably say somewhere around 59,307, approximately. I wouldn't even be on the podium. I wouldn't even make the magazine. But if someone said, where would you rank in the one to 100 best teachers on the planet? I'm at least top 17, <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm somewhere up there, all right? Because I like this, I like teaching, I prefer teaching because it's a challenge to me to help someone learn something they've never, ever, ever experienced before and just being able to show them that light and getting that, getting that uh, idea, just woo, I like it. That to me is exciting because it's, it's a challenge. Guru said you're between one and five for sure. <laughs> hey, that works. That works. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Chico, Chris, I appreciate your kind comment. Steve says I'm number 100. Hey, I'm there. I'm in the list, baby. I like it. All right, so let's keep going. We have two other types of gaps to talk about. My buddy John Woodward, I think his last name is John. So earlier he said, what about if a white candle gaps up? Call it a, uh, it's, uh, let me see, I'll give you this example right here. We're probably gonna stay on coals for a little bit, but here's an example right here. I'm pointing with two black candles and I'm gonna do another one. And another one. All right, two black candles. Now, when a white candle gaps up, or again, the colors doesn't matter, when a bullish candle gaps up, I have a very specific name for this type of gap. A lot of you know it. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the name right now. 
It's called a retest gap. Now, what a retest means is very simple. You ready? Here it goes. Wait. <laughs> AKA B, and here's a famous word, it was becoming more and more popular over time. Patient, P A Y T I E N C E. Have patience. Get paid to be patient. If you want to make money in the stock market, I know you all do because you're here. In fact, I want to say this for everyone who's here right now. If you are listening, you are literally kicking people out. I did not think this webinar was going to fill up. This webinar is 100% at max. If you're here in this seat, do not leave. There are people banging on the door trying to get in. I'm going to have to make the webinar bigger for tomorrow. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know there'd be more than 100 people. This is exciting. All right, so it's called patience. You've got to be patient. Ooh, Wilson, I like that. He has it P-A-Y-C-E-N-T-S. Ooh, I like that too. Patience. You guys get the idea, right? You've got to be patient. You've got to wait. You've got to let the trade come to you. So when you're dealing with a retest gap, white candle gapping up, think about it. You ready? Let's explain the most important part of day trading when you're looking for gaps, the why behind this. Now, this is really, really easy. So, Guru, me and you, and Kristen, my lady chiropractor over on the West Coast. Kristen, you ready for this? Let's explain why this happens, why the retest works, what it is. Let's pretend that you bought this stock right here at $49 on this day. You bought the stock 49 bucks on that day, right? Doesn't matter how many shares, but just to make things really uncomfortable for you so that I get the answer I'm looking for, let's say you bought 10,000 shares, spending 490 grand. I'm just driving the point home, okay? If that stock randomly gaps up $2 the next day and you're up 20 grand, what do you likely do? And ladies and gentlemen, everyone can answer this. What do you more than likely do if you buy that day and boom, the stock gaps up the next day? What are you going to do? You are going to sell. Yes, you're going to sell. Now, is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that. Alan Lobo, what's up, brother? It has been a while. Miss you. So there's nothing wrong with it. Guru says, but, dot, dot, dot. Oh, here it comes. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But what are you going to do about it? Well, if people are going to sell, that means that you need to wait and let them sell, allowing what's called a retest to come in, and then you buy it. You let them sell. They're going to lock in profits, causing the stock to go lower. And then people who missed the move earlier, they can now use hindsight to see, oh yeah, the stock has actually moved pretty well. I want in. It's pulling back a little bit. Let me buy this. The vast majority of gaps, the vast majority of gaps are retest gaps. Retest, I can't spell. I'm a terrible speller. I can't even spell the word retest. I made up the word. No, I didn't. Okay. The vast majority of gaps are retest gaps. Therefore, the, ma the vast majority of gaps that retests are going to have a lower shadow. That lower shadow is the traders selling to lock in a gain. All right. So, Paul, what I want you to do for me is I want you to, uh, and I want everyone here, go ahead and write this down for me. Um, there's just a there's a lot of different terms for retest. So pullback is another one. Okay, pullback uh, is called retracement is another one. Retracement. What's another term for retest? Pullback, retracement, uh, bounce. Yeah, sure, awesome, Ashley. So we got bounce. What's another one? Retest, pullback, retracement, bounce. These all mean the same thing. 
I'm gonna finally give you a really, really, and this is gonna be creepy and I hope it is, but I'm gonna show you right now. Watch this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow some minds, get some napkins ready. I'm gonna draw on my screen what's called the retest wave. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get a pen and paper or a pencil or a tablet and draw this right now if you can. Seriously, if you're, if you're watching a recording of this, just go ahead and pause it. I know it sounds really simplistic, but I want you to draw this exact rotation, this wave for me right now. Because I'm gonna show you where to get in on the vast majority of your retest gaps, right there. That's where you wanna get in, when it pulls back. You do not wanna buy right here, because I love all of you, but this is where most of you have been buying. When you day trade, this is where the majority of you are buying. Type in one if I'm right. You see the stock, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, like, all right, I'm getting in, it's finally confirmed. You get in, and as soon as you get in, it goes down. Why is that? It's because you're chasing. You're getting in at the wrong time, you have not fully understood the sentiment of the gap. That's why. You're not being patient enough. You're chasing, you're chasing, you're chasing. Biggest takeaway from these four classes, do not chase a trade ever. That's one of the number one things you never wanna do. Jeremy, how do I know if I'm chasing the trade? You wanna know? If you have to ask the question, am I chasing this trade? That means you're chasing the trade, <laughs> okay? That's what that means, it means you're chasing the trade. In class four, we're gonna talk about trading in, the, uh, trading in the future, not the present. You never, and I know this sounds weird, but you never wanna trade in the present. You want to trade in the future. We're gonna talk about that in class four, okay? So this move right here, um, I'm gonna circle this move in a different color. Let me circle this in blue. Paul, so when I'm talking about a retest gap, this part in blue right here, this is what I'm gonna call the prior day buyers. Okay, the people who bought on the prior day selling to lock in gains. The previous prior day buyers selling to lock in gains. That's what that wave rotation is. Now, I'm gonna take this exact rotation that's on the screen right now and watch, I can draw and I can show you, I can just put it on top of so many different waves on just the charts I'm looking at right now. I can't go, can I go into a five minute chart? No, I don't think I can go into a five minute chart with this. But check out that kind of wave rotation. Look at that, I just took it and just, and just dropped it on something. I can drop it on all kinds of stuff too. Watch, I'm gonna go into the future. Here we go. Same type of rotation. It's not the exact, but again, I just drew it like you know a month ago. But look, right here, same thing. Here it goes, watch, I'm gonna draw it to another one. Check this out. I'm gonna bring it up here. This one's gonna fit like a, like a candy in a bit. Look at that, look at that rotation, right? I drew this just like freehand. If you can draw this rotation, you can draw it on your screen if you have the charting software that does it. And you can go, hey, I wonder if I'm getting in at a low level. T says, that's amazing. Sherry says, on what time frame does that happen? Sherry, stay with me for class two. We're gonna talk about how to trade these gaps. So for right now, I want your mind to keep you awake tomorrow night so that you can't even sleep. Welcome to my world. Not being able to sleep because the stock market is opening the next day. All right, so I'm gonna go to another stock really quick and I'm gonna talk about another type of gap and then I'm gonna talk about what size gaps to trade, where to find these stocks and then we're done and then class two is next. It feels fast, I know, but trust me, I'm gonna get you where you wanna go. I'm just gonna remove all the fluff because there's no real reason, okay? There's no reason for me to build you up and build you up and build you up and build you up because I'm not selling anything, so I can just get to the point really quickly. Go to present day, all right. So now I wanna talk about HDS. This was a gap today. And I'm gonna talk about what type of gap this is. This is a black candle gapping down. So I talked about a white candle gapping down. Let's talk about a black candle gapping down. A black candle gapping down is also called a retest gap. It's also called a retest gap. 
Now, let's answer the question, why? <clears throat> why is it a retest gap? How do bearish traders who shorted the stock, how do they exit a position? We talked about that just a few seconds ago. You all said they buy to cover, right? They buy to cover. So whoever shorted the stock, let's, let's ask a question. Here it goes. The question is, let me do that with a different color arrow just to make things better. So I'm going to point to this with a lime green, almost chartreuse arrow. Did someone in the world go bearish on that day, yes or no? Okay, you guys are running in yes. Are you 100% positive? Yes, you are. Okay. You are totally correct. Now, did that person make money the next day, yes or no? Yes, they did. Is that an absolute fact? Yes, it is, <laughs> right? Now, it could be one person. It could be one person in the whole world that someone made money, you can rest assured. Now, obviously, we know it's not just one person, okay? It's not just one person. There's going to be a lot of people who do this. Paul says, uh, if they sold short, they did. Yep, they sold short, right? So if they sold short on this green day and the stock is gapping down, yep, you're absolutely right. They're making money. So how does a bearish trader uh, exit their position? They buy to cover. This buying to cover creates the retest, also known as a pullback, also known as a retracement, also known as a bounce, all those terms. And you guys ready for this? I'm going to go ahead and draw the rotation right now. It's the exact same rotation I showed you earlier, just in reverse. Okay? It's the exact same thing. So I'm going to draw them back to back right now. So there's your two. This is the bullish one. This is the bearish one. So we're going to look at the, since we're talking about bearish retest gaps, we're going to talk about those right now. A fish hook. Yeah, totally. Looks a little like a fish hook. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into class two because I want this to be one of the hardest nights you've had of sleeping in a long time. <laughs> Ready? I'm going to go into the five minute chart. Let me make sure that this is going to work. Watch this. I want this to be kind of cool. Let me see if I can get uh, where that drawing go. Oh, it's too big. Sugar cookies. Oh, well, I thought it was going to be really cool. Type in a one if you see the retest, if you see the pullback. Type in a one, okay? You guys get the idea. Now, what you and me, what, what I did for the first two years of my day trading is I went in bearish right there. Type in a one if you're with me. Don't lie to yourself. I was there, guys. I was the worst trader in the world seven years ago. I could have written a best-selling book called, hey, do the exact opposite of what I'm about to do, and you're going to make a lot of money. If you let the market beat you into submission where you are only trading in the present, you will always lose. You have to think future. We're going to talk about that in class four. All right. If you are chasing the trade, that is the number one rule that I never, ever, ever want you to do. Do not chase a trade. It's better to wait, be patient, and miss the trade than chase it. I can assure you. Here is the retest right here. Boom, boom, shakalaka. Isn't that the exact same thing I just drew earlier? It's the exact same rotation. It's the exact same thing. I mean, it's the same. It's unbearable. Now, I know I'm making this stuff look easy. Trust me, I realize that. But I've been doing this for a very, very long time. But this is solid. Solid. This, this stuff works. Often. Now, are you always going to make money doing it? Eh, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But if you can draw this and you can know, you at least have an idea. If you can know for sure, hey... Don't get in here because it's a retest gap. So Jeremy says, wait for the retest. Well, then wait, you shall. And then when it actually does a retest, what are you looking for? That's the question that most of you are wondering right now. Okay, Jeremy, this is cool and all. 
this whole retest thing, that's great that you can draw this after the stock has already happened. But where would you get in? Welcome to Candlesticks 101 with your host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom. Is there any particular candlestick pattern right there that you may or may not be familiar with? Go ahead and write it in the chat pane if you are familiar. Richard's already got it. Richard's got it. Sean's got it. Marta's got it. Jesse's got it. Linda's got it. Scott's got it. You guys got this. Now, if you have no idea what candlestick chart I'm pointing to, it's okay. I'm going to teach you all these things. But this is something called an evening star reversal. This is one of my top favorite candlestick patterns ever. Day trading, swing trading, doesn't matter. This is one of my top six absolute best patterns. And the best part is it's really easy to trade. How would you have played this? Entry here, stop right here, boom. Now, I know I can use this in hindsight and say, oh, this worked really well. I can do this all day, every day. All day, every day. I can show you how these things are gonna work. One of my coaching students, his name is Scott. He's in California. He made four R's on this trade. We're gonna talk about how much that is, but let's just say for right now, it's 4%, okay? We're gonna talk more about class two. <clears throat> but this particular gap, he's one of my coaching students and he's gonna mail me, by the way, he's mailing us a giant box of strawberries. I was telling Ashley, she's in the room with me, so he's gonna mail us this giant, <laughs> This giant box of strawberries. It was one of the agreements that we had in coaching. He said, hey, if you can get me profitable in this amount of time, I'll mail you some of the California strawberries. I was like, oh, okay. I love strawberries. I love blackberries. I love blueberries. I love all fruit. So anyway, he's mailing me that carton overnighting it. It's going to get there at 10 in the morning. It was a great trade. A lot of people made a lot of money on that trade. But the best part is they were able to recognize it and they were able to see why it was happening. So I know you're on the edge of your seats. And I'm gonna give this to you for free. This is normally where I would do the sales pitch, by the way. If you guys were wondering, this is usually about the time I do it. If I was going to, but I'm not. I could, but I won't. Type in a 10 if you want me to show you where you can access the gapping list for free. Seriously, it's totally free. I'm gonna show you right now. No sales pitch, I could do it. And I could make like $20,000 in the next three minutes, but I won't, I don't care. I can do the trading. We're gonna enrich lives together, right, ladies and gentlemen? We're gonna enrich lives together. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna post this in the chat pane for those who are here live. For those who are watching the recording, it will also be in the description box below. Um, or you can just pause the screen. It's www.barchart.com forward slash stocks, forward slash performance, forward slash gap, forward slash gap, hyphen up or hyphen down. So this is a gap up, gap down list before the market opens. This populates at 9 a.m. Eastern for that day. For that day, it populates at 9 a.m. Eastern. All right? So, Jeremy, I want more gaps before 9 a.m. Eastern. Where do I go? Let me show you a really cool trick. Pre-market movers. You can, just, you can just literally Google that and you'll get like three or four free websites. There's a lot of stuff that's for free. Imagine there are some companies who will charge you $3,000 for the website that I just sent you for free. And I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I could have done that to at least one person. Who wants to buy this? It's three grand. I mean, it's on the website. It's on the, it's on the internet for free. Pre-market most active stocks, that one's there. Pre-market stock watch, I use both of those from time to time. This one, this one, and this one, you can have three resources at least 30 minutes before the market opens to determine what stocks are gapping and how they're gapping. What I wanna show you now is the percentage of the gap. I'm gonna give you four zones. When you're looking for a gap, ladies and gentlemen, zero to 1% or zero to 2%, there are great gaps sometimes. There's something called micro gaps. Micro gaps. They're very, very small and, so, and oftentimes don't show up on screeners. 
The only way you're gonna catch a gap of that size is you have to trade that stock actively. Does that make sense? It's a stock that you have to follow all the, I mean, all the time. My, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, whatever. If you're trading a stock, you trade it all the time. These gaps can be very fun, but they oftentimes don't get picked up on scanners because ladies and gentlemen, there are thousands of them. Thousands. There are so many. I like to focus on three to 10% is my bread and butter. Money all day. That's what we can call that number. Money all day. Three to 10%. So if you set up a screener, you can set up a screener to find stocks gapping up or down three to 10% that have more than Let's put 500,000 uh, to 1 million shares on average. So you can get a lot of penny stocks that are gapping up that way. And that's a whole nother, whole nother type of trading. It's called low float trading. I'm sure all you guys have heard of warrior trading with uh, Ross Cameron. Great dude. I've never met him in person. I've never talked to him. I know he is a genuine trader. I mean, he actually does trade the markets. That's all I'm gonna comment on. I have a very specific opinion, but I'm not gonna get into that right now, okay? He trades uh, something called low float. Low float are stocks that have very light volume that are trading, that are gapping with momentum, and you have to get in with a lot of stock, like tens of thousands of shares. And yeah, you can make a lot of money quickly, but there's a problem. If it's low float, meaning it's low volume, is really hard to sometimes get out properly. Would you guys imagine that, right? If, if the average, if you're trading an average stock that has 100,000 shares per day on average and you just drop 10 grand yourself getting in that trade, you don't think there's gonna be a problem getting out of that? It's just kind of, that's kind of common sense, right? So focus on stocks that have some volume because it's just safer, that's all. I'm here to help you guys not lose money. I'm not here to promise you guys the world, give you a Ferrari and a Porsche and say you're gonna make millions day trading. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to teach you how to not lose money because when you do that and you can control your risk and you know how to trade, you will eventually be in a location where you can make money. Like I said at the beginning, it takes time, it takes dedication, it takes work. Tip number one, if that makes sense, I'm not hating on anybody. I'm just saying there's a lot of day traders who do low flow, but they put in a lot of stock, a lot of shares, and when they lose, they lose big. Of that, I am 100% confident. They lose massive, like tens of thousands of dollars. And then, yeah, they make money the other times, but then they also sell education courses. That Guys, don't forget that. Okay, If, I, you know, if I'm making $10,000 per course that I'm selling, I don't mind losing on trades. <laughs> right? Doesn't, I don't care. So yeah, I'll throw money in there and if it loses, whatever. Does that make sense? I mean, you guys get that? It's like, if you're paying a bunch of money for the course, they, that person doesn't care if they lose money. They don't care because they're going to get more money coming in because they're just good percenters. I'm not, all right, sorry, I'm going down the wrong road, my bad. I'm hating on the industry. I apologize. I'm sorry. That's why I created Real Life Trading. <laughs> all right, so... We talked about gap size, zero to three, they're great. There's just tons of them. Three to 10, focus on those. Those are good. 500 to a, to a million, so 500 average to a million average per day. 10 to 20, uh, sure. If there's not a lot of these, 10 to 20 is fine. Do those second, how about that? Justin said, what's the best advice you have not to lose money? That's a great question, Justin. Stick with me for tomorrow and I got you. I will take care of that for you. It's a phenomenal question. But I gotta be honest, guys, Justin Linderman is setting me up. That was, <laughs> he's been trading with me for seven <laughs> He's been trading with me for seven years. He knows what's coming next. All right, uh, 10 to 20, just do those second. Is that fair? So go through all these gaps first, figure out if you like them or not and then do the 20, the 10 to 20 second. 20% uh, or more, hey guys, if you wanna trade those, you're more than welcome to. 
Here's the reason that most people don't do anything once the stock gaps 20%. They don't know what's going on. After a stock is moving 20%, that's so much. Most people don't sell because they're afraid. They're like, well, I'm already down 20%, whatever. And they get pessimistic at that point. Okay, that's when something called fades happen a lot. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Don't worry, I'll shed some light on that. 20% plus, let me just be frank. If you want to focus on these gaps, be a two-year veteran. Okay? Be, trade real money profitably for two years, and you can start focusing on 20% gaps. There's nothing wrong with them. They can work. They just really, really, really require a solid amount of discipline because why? Why do you think they require a solid amount of discipline? Guys, the stock has already moved 20%. Do you think you're chasing, yes or no? Do you think they're chasing? If you get into a trade that's already moved 20%, are you chasing? Yeah, you're chasing a little bit. <laughs> yes, in a way, exactly. So my, my, my brother who said that, Santi, he is one of the best traders I've ever seen in my life. So yes, you'll get there, it'll happen, just give us some time. <clears throat> All right, just give us some time. Jeff said, shouldn't their stops get them out? Uh, Jeff, most people when they trade, they don't use stops, my brother. Some of, most of them don't use stops. All right, so we talked about the four types of gaps, bullish gap and go, bearish gap and go, bullish retest, and bearish retest. We also talked about the size of the gaps that are good. We talked about websites to go to get the gaps that are happening before they happen. And we talked about why they occur, what the sentiment means, and how it's happening. I know a lot of you have tons of questions. That's phenomenal. This is only class one. My only ask of you, these classes are free. Tell more people. I apologize if you were not able to get in tonight. I had no idea this many people would show up. I'm humbled. I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored, blessed, and privileged. It means the world to me that each and every one of you uh, just keep telling your friends. Real Life Trading is one of the fastest internet stock market education companies on the planet as far as growth and it's all thanks to you. Now again, all of our stuff is free, but we're really truly enriching lives from teachers to stay-at-home dads to stay-at-home moms to police to firemen to lawyers to doctors to chiropractors to business owners to lawyers everywhere across the globe on all seven continents except Antarctica. I haven't had anyone in Antarctica yet. Six continents. Ladies and gentlemen, you are incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for what you do. If you have a question, feel free to email me, jeremy at reallifetraining.com. I'm also on Twitter, at Newsome Nuggets. I'm on LinkedIn. Make sure to like our Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I post stuff like this all the time. I know you have tons of questions. Either do one of two things. If you're watching a recorded version of this, go ahead and go click on class two and get this party going. Or email me, jeremy at reallifetraining.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm doing an abrupt ending, but I don't have anything to sell. <laughs> this is usually why I do the sales pitch. So really, it's just me saying, thank you for being here. You're amazing. I'm going to see you in class two where we talk about how to actually day trade these things, right? We talked about what they are. Now we're going to talk about how to do it. <laughs> Woo! I'm jazzed up. I'm going to see you in class two. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. You rock. Bye.